player. Because your vision is our vision. This is my ColecoVision here. The player. Looks beautiful. They've got the, uh, the sticker on the front still in pretty good condition. I love this one. Uh, I've got my Atari Max Ultimate 3D flash cartridge in there. And again, just go buy one. They're worth it. Just trust me. Um, although I'm going to have to switch that out for our new game. Uh, and I've got my Epix XJ500 joystick here. I picked this one up for five bucks. It's great. This is the one that you probably heard in the last video. It's got uh, micro uh, um, micro switches in it. It's great. Really uh, ergonomic to, heal, uh, to hold. And then this is the number pad. So you can actually get a pass-through number pad so that you can play with uh, a joystick of your choosing uh, and also have the number pad to play the games which is pretty sweet uh, so I actually had to do uh, two slight modifications on this system so <clears throat> the first one I did was uh, I did an AV output which uh, people call it AV or composite AV for audio video or composite for composite video so the system normally uh, outputs RF through that port uh, this port on the end over here and you would set it to channel 3 or 4 um, but I actually got a uh, board a small um, board that's assembled picked it up on eBay for I don't know 15 bucks or so uh, just beat a couple solder connections and then put some ports on the back here for the, the yellow for the composite video and then the white for the audio so you can get clearer video uh, it gives you a little bit higher quality because the signal will split uh, the audio and video on two separate signals rather than um, doing the RF modulation and putting them in one lead so it's a little bit clearer and from there <clears throat> I picked up this uh, HDMI uh, converter so it'll actually take SCART RGB S video uh, AV if you get the little converter piece and up convert it to uh, HDMI 720p 1080p but it also does other resolutions uh, that are not widescreen so it doesn't skew the picture which is pretty cool and then I go into my recorder here, which I use to capture the, capture the actual game footage. So the footage that you guys are seeing are from my actual ColecoVision. Uh, it's just getting uh, upscaled a little bit, but it's on the real hardware, which is really neat. So uh, the other modification I had to do was actually for the power supply. Uh, what you guys see back here, this blue box back here, they're usually silver. This is actually an arcade power supply. So I had the huge brick, you know, that we all have with our ColecoVisions. And apparently the voltage regulator in it died, so it wasn't providing enough power uh, to power the video RAM, so it wouldn't power up. So what I did was, I took the uh, the connector, I cut it off of my old power supply. Let me pull this out here. So this custom connector for the ColecoVision, um, it's it's not very common. Uh, I think it was custom for this. I've never seen it before. And the internals of the power supply died, so all I did was I cut this cord off of the old power supply, and then I just wired it up to an arcade power supply, which just so happens to work perfectly because the ColecoVision was a little odd. It uses uh, positive 5 volts, negative 5 volts, and positive 12 volts. So the negative 5 is kind of strange, and it's also strange that it uses all three. Um, but luckily, the arcade power supply does supply those so I just uh, cut off the end hooked it up and boom I've got a new uh, ColecoVision power supply that's more reliable so if you guys ever run into that this is a good way to fix it because those power supplies are big heavy unreliable and kind of un kind of expensive so that's definitely a, a great workaround that you can do Yeah.